Okay, here we go. We've got the uh, Lyman Mold Master XX, the Mold Master 20, and we're just going to disconnect the thermostat so you can run direct basically to a PID. It's pretty easy. I also have the Lyman 61. <clears throat> um, a lot of people use that for zinc. I'll do a separate video on that because the um, thermostat knob is, it's a little bit of a different setup. This whole housing comes off directly. On the 61, at least the one I have, you have to take off this knob to take off the housing. So, But it's pretty easy. So let's start by um, getting this, this housing off. We got four screws. There it goes. <laughs> And um, it's a pretty basic concept. Basically, um, whoops, there's a coil heating element in here with two, um, well, let's just take a look. Here, let me just disconnect it. Okay, so you have these two connections for the heating element, and here are the two connections for your electrical outlet and you're just going to connect these directly to this um, you know maybe you guys remember we did a repair in the last video and um, it it shows a little browning here I, I basically melted down um, wheel weights uh, 10 pounds of wheel weights just to test it and it worked like a champ. So here, I'm going to reconnect the way this thing would have been connected. So, because this is already bypassed. So here, let me just... So the way this was, if it was like this, okay? So from this, so this pin always was direct. And then this connects to the thermostat, and this connection went there. So what you want to do is you're basically, to bypass this entire thermostat, you're going to take off, okay? So now the thermostat is disconnected, and we're going to reconnect just like that, okay? So... You know, this one was always connected to the right side. This is connected to the left. We're going to reconnect that, put it back on. I could actually just take off this entire thermostat anyways um, because it doesn't work, which is why I disconnected it in the first place. So there's your chicken head knob. Um, could take off this. Whoops, I'll use this one. Take off this screw here. And just take the thing out because it's not doing anything at this point. And if you're going to do this, you need some kind of thermostat. And if you guys are running PIDs, the PID works so much better with these. It's just so much more consistent. So now, here's our old thermostat, which is broken. We've got our two connections. These are going to go... Oops. directly wham so that's basically it guys um, and I'm not gonna fire this thing up and test it right now just because well I got other stuff to do but that's basically all you do okay and that's how you bypass the thermostat on the mold master 20 all right you guys have a great day Okay, there's a look at the uh, two vintage Lyman uh, bottom pour pots here, the Moldmaster 20, Moldmaster XX, the 20, 20 pound, and the Model 61, which is a 10 pound. A lot of people like these for zinc. Um, as you can see, they're beauty contest winners here. <laughs> I actually, um, I bought this as is on eBay years ago. 
I think I started casting zinc oh, 2018 or 2019, and I probably got this, I think, for 40 or 50 bucks on eBay. So I think they're going for quite a bit more. Um, I think the Seiko uh, pot is basically the same construction made by the same company. So let's get this one out, and let's do a little work on this one. Let's see if we can move the camera in a little. And um, we're basically going to look at disconnecting the thermostat here. So uh, let me grab some tools and we'll get it going. Okay, we're back. Um, just like the um, Model 20, there's four screws that hold this thermostat housing on. Um, I don't know if this is true about all of them. But on my Lyman 61, you've got to take off this chicken head knob first. And there's a screw in here, flat head. You're going to need a small enough screwdriver to get in there. So let's see if I can uh, get this bugger off. Oh, it's cracked too. It's cracked. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter because this is disconnected, not in use. So in order to get the housing off, you have to take that off. And you'll see why in a second. And like I mentioned, I'm not sure if this is true about all of the Model 61s, but it's true about this one. So um, the difference is the thermostat is actually connected to the pot itself. Okay, and this pot has a bunch of insulation in it, which my other one didn't have. Um, but the the bottom line is the same for both of these. Um, oh, here's the mica spacer. It looks okay, but it looks a little little rough in the middle. It's hopefully going to last. But so we're connecting directly. So the coil connectors in the pot are right there. Okay, um, this used to go directly to the thermostat here, and now it runs directly to here. So here's this pot coil. Here's this pot coil. This connection used to go oh, somewhere in here. I think it's right here on the bottom. And I just connected it... Um, Geez, you know, I did this a while back, and I'm not sure what I used to connect this with. Um, the bottom line is, you, I think I just wrapped a wire around here or something, and it may have had solder on it. But the bottom line is electrical tape, solder, it's not going to hold it. Uh, that's why everything is basically, you know, connected with these um, connectors. It's going to get too hot. It's going to melt your... Um, solder it's going to melt any kind of electrical tape nothing's going to be able to withstand basically I mean this one IPID at 850 because the melt point for zinc is 787 and that'll get you a mush you need a flow you need to get a good flow to get good bullets good zinc bullets so um, that's up that's the bottom line all of these pots inside have a heating coil it's like the the heating coil on a stove or something there's two connections going out and they have to go directly to your two pins and that's it now the bottom line is when i put this back together i got to make sure this isn't touching some metal um and i think what i did is put it together like this whoops get that piece out of the way and what I would suggest when you're doing all this to test it is put it on a power strip, um, turn off the power strip, plug this thing in, fire up or uh, turn on the power strip and just, you know, have it be on a breaker. So, okay, let's see if we can get this bugger back together here, how we had it. Okay, what am I doing? Oh, I've got a little thing going on there. So, actually, I'll do this off camera. You guys don't need to see me fumbling around. But the bottom line is, it's pretty easy to bypass these. You just want to make sure, um, 
your your wires aren't touching anything metal and um, and you get a PID to run it and after that you're pretty much gonna be good to go um, so got some fumbling going on here so that's basically it guys all right I'm gonna finish screwing this thing down and you guys have a great day